Underpass. Woo! Uh, it didn't make any sound. Oh, that was so lame. Let's go again. Let's go again. Ready? Ah. Uh, so funny because Ford bakes in a fake sound and it's an option through the um, through the radio if you want. It's just an option. So I've got that on obviously, but it's uh, it's so funny to hear. It's so funny to hear. All right guys, driving the Mustang EV Mach 5. Let's uh, let's get it out and see how uh, see how she goes. So I'm just here in a Best Buy uh, parking lot. People all around me here. Just gonna get out here. Got lots of big cameras to kind of, you know, guide me around, show me where I need to go. Yep, all the little sensors and stuff like that on the front, on, this, on the back, collision sensors. You know, um, you know when you're backing out, little sensors on the back. This car is is genuinely very, very. It's a it's a smart car. You know, we call our phones smartphones. This is this is generally a, a smart a smart car. That's one thing that I really have, have gravitated to with this vehicle is, you know, it doesn't have all the the emotion of a you know a big, you know, gas powered vehicle. Um, but it does act like a computer. I mean, you feel so comfortable in this vehicle. You've got your car play, you've got your, you know, your radio if you need it. You have all your messaging, you know, from from your smartphone. Everything is synced up. You've got all your GPS. It's just such an easy when you're looking at your your navigation, it's on a huge huge screen. Um you've got all your um your your um what do you call it your your driver your car sort of diagnostics you know is the tire pressure low is it um you know is your range starting to get a little bit low everything is just displayed here on the like the central i keep calling it the central nervous center or nervous you know the the brain of the of the sort of vehicle essentially so um so just, just sort of sitting in the vehicle, driving around, the first thing I notice is that it is an SUV. At the end of the day, it is an SUV, it's an electric vehicle. So it's got a substantial amount of weight to it. Um, this one weighs in, it's the premium model, it weighs in at 4,300 pounds, um, which is not, I mean, on paper, that's not super heavy. It could just be the distribution of the weight. It, it feels like a lot of the weight is in the back, um, you know, I mean, to justify it, the batteries would be all sort of along the bottom, right? So the weight should be distributed through the bottom, but it definitely just feels feels heavy. In saying it feels heavy, it's also very, very fast. So when you're throwing it around a little bit, you don't necessarily feel the weight. Uh, it's, it's very quick to go. It goes. When you want to get somewhere, it's there. Um, this one's rear wheel drive, so you can feel, you know, when you when you give it a little gas or when you give it a little throttle, <laughs> not gas, when you give it throttle, um, you feel the power really driving from the, the back, the back wheels, from the rear wheel. Um, and it really, like, it literally, like, watch this, I'll take my hat up, it really just kind of full send, it kind of, it sticks you back. It's got enough thrust, it's got enough torque that it can really send you back in your, in your seat. Um, driving sort of dynamics you know feel steering wheels you know it's pretty light it's all right it's, you know it's it feels a little bit flimsy it doesn't feel like i'm in a sports car it's not really tight it's a little bit sort of loose a little bit sort of flimsy i, I keep saying um but you know i didn't have super high expectations so getting into it it, it doesn't have a bad feeling I, I wouldn't say it's you know it's on par with a german you know amg or m car in terms of performance or in terms of feel um but it's not horrible it's not like my wife's kia where i get into it i'm like whoa this just feels like feels very flimsy it just doesn't feel like there's much not much there when i say flimsy i mean the feedback of the road like i'm i'm grabbing this steering wheel it's chunky it's got a 10 and 10 and 2 notches um you know i'm feeling the road at least somewhat i can feel what the 
with this sort of, you know, you know, I get a lot of input back. If I'm turning, I feel the turn. I feel the car leaning into a turn. Um, so in that respect, it's, you know, it's, give it about a six out of 10, six and a half, seven out of 10. It's like, it's, you know, above average, it's okay. Um, riding over bumps and stuff like that, it does a great job, it does a good job. It's, it's a bigger car, it sits off the road. Um, so it's not gonna have that same, you know, effect. Again, I'm coming, I'm a little bit, a little bit biased. I'm coming from a two door sports car where, you know, go over a bump and it's very like, woo, 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 bouncing all over the place. You feel everything. You're essentially sitting on the floor. So this is, this is a nice sort of change, um, you know, comparable to, again, I always go back to the German vehicles. It's probably not comparable. It's not like you're riding on a magic carpet, but you know, it's not like I'm just like, you know, I don't get out of here and my back's like destroyed. Um, and I think that's that's credit to the seats too. They're pretty, they're pretty cushiony. They're pretty nice and, uh, and comfortable. Um, ride height, I sit nice and high here. I've got a lot of nice power adjustable seats and stuff. So uh, visibility is really, really good. Again, I'm in my two door coupe. All I can see is the car in front of me. I can't see two cars in front of me. I don't know what's going on in front. So this is a nice change. I can see what's going on in front of me. I know when, when there's enough space uh, to get around and take a car and you know, you know, pop in and out of a lane, do some passing, um, I, can, I can see. So visibility is a big one, um, which, is, which is good. Um, what else can I talk about? You know, we, we talked about the, the torque the pickup that's that's probably the, the biggest obvious thing um more into the technology um you know the the climate controls are really nice they've kind of you know if you if you watch the start of this video and you haven't clicked through you can see how the climate control is all sort of styled into the front dashboard um you know they've done it really really well so it doesn't look like there's a bunch of like eyesores sitting on the on the on the dashboard it's all kind of like very seamlessly kind of worked in uh which is really really nice um the one thing i do notice when i start to accelerate a little bit is that the car doesn't want to you know when you turn and stuff of like that it doesn't corner that well it corners like it's a big tall car it kind of falls into the corners ow i just <laughs> I just banged my head um so it's it's a little bit i would call it clumsy you know it's it's nice in a straight line but when you start to get deep into like you know twisting and turning it's 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 not you know it, it doesn't look like it can it doesn't feel like it can really handle you know i wouldn't be taking this to a track and zipping around cores and stuff like that but you know your day-to-day -day sort of like there's a car in front of me right now he's putting his turn line signal on boom gone around him and i'm off right it's it's just as quick if not quicker than 90% of the cars on the road, just just on sheer, sheer you know, stoplight to stoplight kind of thing, which is a nice luxury to have. You know, you, you can think of all different sort of situations where you need a little little bit of thrust and you're gone, right? So with regards to that, it's, it's, it's actually really, really good. And that's one thing that really kind of excites me about this car is that I, that, that quick little sort of, that, that torquiness, that peppiness of the vehicle. So I'm sitting here, I'm at a stoplight, Oh. Sorry, sorry about that. I might have to edit that out. The radio came back on. So I'm just sitting at a stoplight. Obviously, you know, dead silent, very quiet. Um, just a really nice place to be. I, I think my eyes always fixate on this beautiful sort of screen in front of me. Um, it's just such a nice display piece. It's whether it's got your music on it, you know, displaying the, the album uh, photography or you know it's got your gps you can see the map a huge map of everywhere you want to go um the display sort of directly in front of me is pretty small pretty pretty basic you know it shows my range shows that the car is ready uh but shows a little sort of square in front of me just to show my proximity to the next vehicle shows what um you know drive what what mode i mean not driving mode but like you know drive neutral reverse uh park uh then it shows my my um my tachometer or my miles per hour in in digital i think that could all be probably played around with a little bit um but again just a just a really sort of nice place to be um when i'm in this vehicle i can't help but always want to just from from a start always want to hit it always just because i know what it's capable of. it's just so fun so fun to go just boom you're gone you know i know that all the cars around me aren't capable of doing that regardless of their sound 
So it's just nice to kind of play around with people. You know, this morning I had a big Ford F-150 truck by me. And the guy is struggling, giving it everything he's got to stay remotely close to this thing. And I'm, you know, I'm silent but deadly is the saying. I just give it a little, gone. He catches up to me like 20 seconds later, give it a little, gone. Like it's just, it's so pleasing to do. Um, and so, you know, buying one of these, buying, you know, a performance sort of electric vehicle, um, you're gonna get a lot of that and you're gonna get a lot of joy out of that. So, um, what else to cover? I mean, the, the, the car for the price point, it's about, this one's, you know, it's, moderately to highly sort of spec. There's the GT, obviously, if you're really looking for, for high level performance, you go GT. I think you're looking in the 55 sort of thousand dollar range, top of the line. That's gonna get you zero to 60 in 35, three point, not 35 seconds, 3.5 seconds. So that's bonkers fast. That's, that's M5, you know, competition, you know, Mercedes C63, E63 class performance obviously doing it silent but that's that's the performance you get for 55 grand so that's that's a huge bargain um you can get into one of these for 42 grand um and you know after sort of driving it around letting my wife drive it stay tuned she's going to give you her thoughts on my next video i would actually consider not for me but for my wife who is big on tech and stuff like that i would actually consider buying some of this it's every time i get into an electric vehicle being at the the driver enthusiast the big v8 the 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 emotional sort of driver that i am uh, i'm i'm always pleasantly surprised every time i get into a vehicle the last one was the p100d tesla and you know it had the torque it had the big screen it had the the get up and go but the fit and finish the you know the the quiet calmness of the cockpit these are things that really really sort of entice me um, you know, to, to want to be a buyer and to, and to want to get into this market. Um, it definitely should be mentioned that this car is really, really good. Um, if you go into the technology, into the infotainment system, we're showing you sort of all the different, um, all the different charging areas that are around very similar to a gas station. You bring it all up and it, it shows you every, every little charging station. I know the closest one for me is 0 0.4 miles, but it just breaks it all down. So, you know, range anxiety is obviously, it was a big thing, um, you know, back in the day, but it's starting to become a thing of the past. You get into this thing and right away you're like, okay, shoot, this is how much range I have. This is, you know, where, you know, my limited amount of infrastructure in terms of, you know, charging this vehicle. Um, what are my options? I'm starting to freak out, you know, you know, trying to, trying to do the calculations. When do I have to leave to go get it, you know, you know, re, re, um, re what do you call it recharged up um and the first thing i noticed when i got in here is that you don't have that fear this thing literally gives you a lot of a lot of options and whether you go with with um you know ford's ev go um that's an option that's a little, little more limited their infrastructure i think they're still starting to build that up you can use the tesla superchargers you can use charge point um, but my point is that, you know, with Biden's new plan and everything going forward, you know, 40% of sales are EV by 2030, the infrastructure is just building and building and building and building. And where we're at right now is actually very positive. So if you own one of these current to date, um, there's no, there's no range fear. You, you literally, you've got a lot of options, not the same as a gas station. I look on my GPS right now behind the camera. And the first thing I see is gas station, gas station, gas station. It's not the same. Um, you know, but, but there's still a lot of availability. You'd be, you'd be pleasantly surprised that you don't need to worry about it. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, in my opinion, you know, this car, very pleasantly surprised. I'd give it a buy overall. You know, I'd probably put it at about seven and a half close pushing eight out of 10 in terms of just, 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 you know, just happiness overall of the vehicle when you encompass sort of everything driving day to day, living with it. You know the range the fact it's an ev it's it's you know it's torque it's you know it's technology i really do enjoy this car um in the practicality of it as well and i would give it a buy so if you're in the market for a vehicle um and you're looking at evs performance evs on the the smaller sort of coupe side uh, definitely have a look at uh, the the mustang uh mach 5 as uh, as one of your one of your sort of you know one of your options. Um, I don't think you'll you'll be uh, upset. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.
okay um, again if you're uh, if you're into these videos uh, please subscribe like follow the channel um, do all that good stuff to support the channel. Let's keep building. Let's keep moving forward. Uh, I'm going to continue in the next couple of days to uh, produce a few more different videos. You know, my likes, my dislikes with this vehicle. You know, I just got it today. I've got it for about a week, so I want to drive it a little bit. Um, I'm going to take it over to the EV, um, you know, charging station and, and do a whole, you know, uh, short video on um, on how the, the whole process of of fuel, I was gonna say fueling it up, but charging it all up, how that all goes, how quickly it is. It's zero to 80% in 45 minutes, two hours, 80 to 100%. So substantially longer for that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. Again, please subscribe if you don't mind and continue to, to watch the videos. There's a lot of good stuff on the channel. Um, check it out. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.